So, three categories of ibadah. Ibadah badaniya, physical ibadah, ibadah maliya, monetary ibadah, ibadah maliya and badaniya, a monetary and physical ibadah. Hajj is the example, the only example of the uh, ibadah that is combined of money and physical, hajj only. Zakat, only money. Salah and song, only physical. Is it clear? Is it nice? Is it wonderful? Was it boring? Was it dull? Was it something new? Did you ever think about this? Did you think that salah is only physical? Did you ever have an idea? And this is the beauty of Islam. When we understand the deen, when we ana a analyze our ibadah in this way, we tend to appreciate Allah more. From the heart emanates a kind of love for Allah. Wow, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Kareem. Wow, Allah, you're so generous. You've given us all kinds of ibadah. Now, what is the wisdom? Anybody have an idea why Allah you know, gave a diversity in ibadah? He didn't just say, just worship me like this, one narrow, straight line. No, He gave us a multitude of types of worship. Why? What's the reason? Wisdom. Think about it. If we had all ibadah, just physical, 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 or if we had all ibadah, that is money, 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 everything involved money, everything that we have to worship with Allah involved money, if we had either of these two extremes, guess what would happen to the mu'min Muslim? Hmm? Think about it. What would happen? Imagine if all the ibadah was uh, physical, burdening, taxing on the body. What would happen then? People will get, it's very easy, people will get tired and bored, redundant, same old thing, again and again, again and again. You know, there's no mixture, there's no variety. And, let's say if we put this away, if all the ibadah inc included money only, money, 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 people will again get fed up, what? This Islam is so tough. Yes, it needs so much money. I, I'm poor. I don't have the money. How am I going to worship Allah? So from the Rahmah of Allah, He combined in our ibadah the two aspects. Money and physical, badaniya, activity. Why? To bring into the worshipping life of ours a kind of rejuvenation, revival. So that we never get bored. The Arabic word for boredom is al-malal, malal. Sometimes if you just keep praying, 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 you get sick and tired of praying. It happens. The shaitan, he enters. Oh, I've prayed too much. I had enough of it. Let me take a break. But that's why you pray. You do tilawat al-Quran. You give some sadaqah, a dollar here, 50 cents here. You do some other, you fast. You do dhikr of Allah. We have a multitude of ibadah going on. Dhikr of Allah. Is it ibadah badaniya or maliya? Or both? Let's see if you understood the three categories. Dhikr of Allah, just by saying, Subhanallah, 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 is this ibadah, badaniya, physical ibadah, or maliya, money ibadah, monetary ibadah? Physical? You sure? Yes. You're 100% right. There's no money involved. In fact, you get the money in return for the dhikr. Because Rasulullah said, whoever remembers Allah, Allah remembers them, and Allah enriches them. So when we remember Allah all the time, during the day and the night, He will enrich us, give us more risk, more provision, more money, more wealth. In fact, in another hadith in Bukhari Muslim, Rasulullah said, whoever recites 100 times in the morning and 100 times in the evening, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al 100 times, this whole phrase, they will never face poverty in their life. Never a single day will pass in their life where they will say, I have nothing to eat, I have nothing to drink, I'm so poor. No. Why? Because this is the fadl, the barakah of zikr, zikr of Allah. And what are you saying? You're saying, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. There is no power, there is no might except in Allah, the Most High, the Most Greatest. And you're saying that a hundred times. This is authentic hadith of Rasulullah in Bukhari and Muslim. He's saying, whoever wants barakah and the risk, whoever wants expansion in their money risk, let them say a hundred times in the morning after Fajr, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم. This is especially important in these times. Tough financial times when people say recession, job loss, you know, layoff, this, business loss. People complain all the time, oh, I'm going through tough financial times. I've lost my savings, I've lost my stock, everything. Well, get to remember Allah. Say 100 times in the morning, 100 times in the evening after Salatul Asr, say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم. Even people who are retired. You know, sometimes one, one brother, he met me, he said, I'm retired, I'm on a fixed income, that's it, just my saving, I'm not working anymore, I don't have a job. Just whatever I, I invested in the IRA and this other things. I say, look, say this and you will see Allah gives you from unknown sources. 
And the brother came back and said, wow, it works. It's magic. I said, it's not magic. Magic is haram. This is the barakah of the deen of Allah. So, therefore, it is important to understand that Saum it's, it's is a physical ibadah, but in the fasting month, we also do a monetary ibadah. We can do zakat in this month, or we can do sadaqah. Any qu- uh, well, we do the questions at the end. So the next thing we come to is, what is the purpose of fasting? What is Saum of Ramadan for? Allah says in the Quran, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَيْذِي مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتِ I don't have that Quran here, but لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The verse in the Quran ends with the ayah لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Meaning fasting is prescribed to you and you should fast so that you may attain taqwa. Allah is giving the reason of fasting. He said, why I want you to fast? So that when you fast, you attain, you achieve, you gain the taqwa of Allah. And that is in line with the hadith of Rasulullah. He said, as-sawmu junna. The psalm fasting is a shield. It shields us from the hellfire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, the, the, the aspect of Ramadan and fasting is that it increases us in taqwa. How? The scholars define that when we don't eat or drink and do not have any kind of intimacy with any partner, we are solely focusing on our ibadah. We are solely focusing on one thing, and that is our connection with Allah SWT. And therefore, in fasting, we are doing two kinds of protection. Hifdhul batan. Batan in Arabic means stomach, the belly, stomach. What goes in the belly? Food, substance, and fluid. Both are F, 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 F squared, you know, food and fluid. Fluid could be water, tea, coffee, juice, drink, you know, halal drink. So food and fluid go to the stomach, button. So fasting, a sawmu hifdun min al button wa hifdun min al faraj. Sawm is classified, fasting is classified as protection for the stomach and protection for the private parts. Faraj in Arabic language means the private part. So because in fasting we cannot do anything that is to be involved with the private part of a body, and because in fasting we cannot do anything that is involved with eating and drinking, we are protecting two of the most important organs in the body of the human being. Two of the most important organs that increase the shahwa, shahwat, lust and desire. I mean, just imagine for a second, when you see a whole big table, huge table, full of food, different color, different taste, different. And you open over there, what happens? The first thing that comes in your mind is your mouth drops down open and your tongue comes out and there's water coming out. Wow, look at that food. That means what? It proves that food and different drinks is a shahwa. Shahwa means lust, desire. And the whole purpose of Ramadan is close the gates of shahwa. Close the gates, the doors of shahwa. Close the doors of lust and desire and and the poison that the shaitan uses. Because these are the two things, the lust of the stomach and the lust of the private part. These are two things that shaitan uses to corrupt us as Muslims. Shaitan forces us to indulge into sins and bad deeds that are engaged and, in or, and, and connected with these two body parts, the stomach and the private part. So, Saum is Hifzul Batan or Hifzul Faraj. Saum is protection of the stomach, protection of the private part. When that happens, when we have closed off the door of Shahawad, what happens? The soul, the ruh becomes alive. And the ruh begins to realize, who am I? Where am I? What am I here for? What's my reason? What is my wujud? What is my existence? What is my identity? The soul, not you, the body. Because remember, insan, al-insanu murakkabun min al-ruh wal jasad. The definition of insan, human being, the definition is that insan is made up of two things. 